Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Sullivan and I teach oboe at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Today, I'll be playing the 9th and 10th grade district solo selection. This year, it is Allegro Moderato by Franz Joseph Haydn and the selection is from the beginning, measure one, until measure 62. I'm playing this at about quarter note equals 108. I hope that performance will help you in your preparations for this year's 9th and 10th grade district solo. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Elizabeth Sullivan and I am the oboe teacher at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Today I'll be giving you a couple of suggestions on how to work on your preparation for the 9th and 10th grade district solo this year. So in this selection by Haydn, um, there are three key points that I want to draw your attention to. The first is the trills that appear throughout the selection. There are some special rules when we're dealing with trills, especially short trills that only take up the space of a quarter note. These are really different than the trills than you might see in your wind ensemble or orchestra repertoire. The very first trill that we see is in measure four. G, F, E is the main structure of that measure, and we're trailing on the middle note, F to G natural. So first we need to be sure that we're using the F to G trill fingering, one, two, three, one, two, and your regular F key here, and you're going to wiggle your first finger on your right hand. Don't try to wiggle the real fingering, F to G. It's going to be very clunky. Clunky? and you'll be very slow. Try your trill fingering. Much easier. And here we wanna be sure that we are remembering that a trill is only two or more wiggles. So don't get lost in that trill in that measure. So just quarter, trill, stop. So just be sure that you're not trying to get too many in. And then the next trill that we come to is a half note worth of trill. Um, down here, um, trilling from A natural to B natural, and this is in measure 25. 
here, we want to be sure that we're starting directly on the A and not trying to start from the upper note, the B natural. So we're trilling from A to B, no special trill fingering there. And here we want to be sure that we stop the trill on the A so that we have time to resolve on the next note. We're not just trying to trill for forever until uh, we get to the next measure. Be sure that you stop the trill, have a little bit of space, and resolve to the G. So that takes care of our ornaments or our trills. The next item that I'd like to mention to you are the character of the classical period dealing with articulations. You'll see that we have lots of staccatos marked, and we even have a few accents. These staccatos and accents are very different than the ones that you might encounter in your wind ensemble repertoire, especially marches. We tend to see a lot of that articulation, um, those markings in marches, but these are very different types of accents and staccatos. The staccatos here have a little bit more body to the note, and so we do want separation, but they're fluffy, ta, ta, Tall. They're separated, but there's body to the note. There's resonance and beauty to the note. It's not a dry staccato of da, da, da. So we're not trying to be like a snare drum. I'll give you a little bit of an example from measure 11. Little bit of body to them, but we still have the separation. So if we were trying to use a dry staccato, here's what that would sound like. Much more pecky, very uh, pointed um, in the approach, and we lose some of the beauty of the classical period era uh, when we use too much of a dry or forced staccato there. So give yourself a little bit more length to the note and you'll find that you can be a bit more successful with a lighter articulation there. Carry that idea through the entire solo, every place that you see a staccato marking. The other item that I'd like to mention is the accent that you'll see on a, a few different notes. The beginning of some of the 16th note passages, some of the half note um, that you'll see in measure 23 and in that area. These accents, again, very different than what you might see in a march. Here, this accent means more to press into the note, more of the way that a string instrument would press the bow down into the strings. Um, and so you could use that example kind of pressing into your arm for that idea of pressing into the note rather than an explosion at the front of the note, uh, like a very hard start to the note. Okay? So here's what we're trying to go for here. Press into the note. Use vibrato if you are already starting to use vibrato. Not a hard start. We don't need a, a, a big attack. So this is just a press into the note, firmer tongue pressure to the reed, but not an explosion of air. And then finally, I would like to just make note of the scale passages. So all of these are stepwise, and if you are practicing your scales, these will look very, very familiar to you. It's important to practice with the subdivided eighth note on with your metronome. It's very easy to play these 16th note passages to line up with the downbeat, but actually the four notes, the four equal 16th notes actually get compressed, and some may be longer than the other. So if we practice with an eighth note pulse on, and we will take a look at measure 22 as an example. One E and a, two E and a. I'll just play that measure for you while we think about the eighth note pulse. Very slow. One E and a, ready, and. be sure that we have four equal notes. If we only practice with the downbeat on, we might get some condensing of the notes because some fingerings are easier than the others. And 
and we may start to feel like we're gonna get seasick if we start to move our air with the contour as well. Practicing slow will help you keep the air stream very steady, able to push through the contour and not let the contour of the notes or the direction of the notes moving up and down influence your air stream at all. Keeping the eighth note pulse steady will even out the division of those 16th notes. I hope you find those tips and tricks, those practice strategies to be helpful as you make your preparations for this year's ninth and 10th grade district solo. Thank you.